Welcome to Mental Health Monday. My name is Mick Coyle, coming up on the programme this week. I think just showing that, like, even though you might be going through tough times, what you know, wherever you are in life, whatever stage of life you're in, that, you know, eventually it will be okay. For you, though, I wonder whether or not people have spoken to you afterwards and said, oh, and I've known you for years and I had no idea you were going through that. Or well, a lot of people were surprised. They were like, oh, you don't strike me as the kind of person who was like, you know, had past struggles or worries or had anxiety and stuff like that. But to hear that is nice because, like I said, it you know, it shows how far I've come. And I'll be reminding you how you can make connections with mental health organisations within your community. It's Mental Health Monday. The home of the UK's conversation about mental health. Welcome back to Mental Health Monday. My name's Mick Coyle. Hey, I tell you what, I'm going to start off with a, an apology because we've had a, a few weeks now where we've not had a podcast uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, the general election got called and uh, with that, I've um, been uh, seconded onto a secondary podcast uh, encouraging young people to vote and uh, get active within uh, voter registration and then obviously the general election itself. And I've been working alongside the influencer on TikTok or the famous person on TikTok, uh, GK Barry. So if you're young, you'll know exactly who she is. If you're older, she's got like three and a half million followers on social media. She's sort of where young people are at in terms of their day-to-day conversations. So GK has been working on this podcast with a big team of people, myself included, uh, to get it out there. And because of the way the general election got called and how quickly it got called, big turnaround so if you are a podcast listener and you listen to other stuff do check out the turnout with gk barry uh, it's been brilliant to be part of the team who've pulled that together really quick but it's obviously meant that this podcast has sort of had to go to the back burner i apologize for that uh, hopefully uh, in the last few weeks you guys have been okay uh, that you've had other podcasts to listen to or previous editions of the podcast too i come back this week with an absolute cracker uh, really good conversation on the way with owen wood now owen If you watched the series Race Across the World on BBC One, um, was one of the contestants who took part in that series. Now, there is a little bit of a spoiler coming up about how he got on on that show, but there is a reason why he's got high profile now. And Owen, during the programme, this is on TV in front of millions of people, opened up about the anxiety that he'd felt as a child and about how he was just getting his head around it and also about how he wanted to talk about it and share his experience so that other people felt that, yeah, they weren't alone if they were struggling with anxiety. It was a really brave and open thing for a young guy to do um, on national TV in front of millions of people to put his uh, you know vulnerabilities out there. But what he's found is that people have come around Uh, People have supported the work that he's done. And actually, he's now, now he's back in the UK and back from the TV show, he's actually working alongside the young people's charity, The Mix. And he's going to be doing some work with them in terms of engaging young people with conversation. They've got some podcasting to do. They do these street interviews as well. Again, I'm I'm back in this young people's podcasting world, aren't I? Um, But it's fantastic that young people who've got high profile are using their profile to talk about mental health and to give other people opportunities to talk about their mental health, to hear the language that they use, to share everyone's experience together so that if you are going through a difficult time, you know that you're not on your own because so many people have gone through that sort of thing before or are currently going through it too now so brilliant to get owen on the program if you don't know about race across the world though let's get owen to explain first and foremost what it's all about so in a nutshell race across the world is a tv show and basically you have to get from the start line so in our case it was uh, northern japan to the finish line which is lombok um, in indonesia and you have no phone no credit card um, and you have a set budget that you get at the start of the race, and it's all in cash. It's no credit cards, nothing like that. And you basically have to get from start to finish, and whoever wins is the winner that all gets there first, is the winner of the race, and there's checkpoints along the way. Um, spoiler alert, you won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's been like three weeks since it came out, so I see, I still see people getting annoyed when they get spoiled online, but like, it's been, it's been out three weeks by now, surely you would have seen it, but yeah, the secret's out finally. I don't have to hide it anymore. It's an amazing program, and my wife and I have watched all the series and the celebrity versions of it, and I'm sure you have as well, because I presume it's part of the reason why you, why you signed up. It, it's obviously such an intense experience from your point of view, filmed over you know weeks and weeks and weeks. But whereas we then see sort of that that one hour edition on a uh, on a on a Sunday evening or whenever we choose to watch it on on the iPlayer. In terms of the intensity of it, what? Is, is it just this all-encompassing thing that's just in your life for 50-odd days? Yeah, the intensity of it is, 
I, I cannot explain how difficult it is. Like whenever people ask like, how was it, I say it's the best thing I've ever done, but it's also the hardest thing I've ever done. Like obviously, like you said, you only see an hour from each week. And, you know, there's four other couples, three other couples that have to be included in that. So there's so much that obviously isn't isn't put in the show. And it just, you know, it's really hard to get across how difficult it is, you know, like how little we're sleeping, how little we're eating, you know, how tight we are on budget. So like, I, I cannot explain how difficult it was. It was the hardest two months of my life by, by far. Um, When you're watching it as well, like... You're obviously, as a as a viewer, making judgments on, oh, don't go that way, or what have you gone that way for, or why have you made that decision? There's one that springs to mind for you, which is when you guys went whitewater rafting, which on the TV show yeah. looked, like a, like, looked like a completely mad decision because it was like, why are you going to go and travel out for two hours to go whitewater rafting? But then from your point of view, you're in the middle of this thing. You think, I've not done anything for myself for X amount of time. If I could just go and enjoy myself doing whitewater rafting for a, a little bit of time, that gives me almost the, the 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 energy, if you like, to think it's actually worthwhile pursuing it. Yeah, it's a very tricky. There's kind of it's a fine line. There's a very yeah fine line like balance you have to have between obviously racing and then experiencing, you know, the country scene along the way. So sometimes you you know some lakes you're going to be more kind of race focused. Sometimes you're going to be more experience focused. And on that lake you just talked about with the whitewater rafting. Uh, that just turned out to be more of an experience based leg and yeah even though it made us came last you know we still had a good time and we don't we don't regret any of the decisions we made in terms of routes but you know you can't win them all so yeah there was a real sense that both you and uh, Alfie who was your sort of like uh, your partner for the, for the for the journey were really going on a journey and I think the other contestants got a sense as well that you as young guys were kind of really sort of getting your sense of your own place within within the world did you feel like that and the way that you were able to express that? Did you feel like that was like fairly reflected in, in the program? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think it was good because like they haven't had many, well, we've been, we're the youngest to ever do it and the youngest to win it. So like, I think it's good that we got our chance to kind of show that, you know, you, you know, I feel like young people these days, days get quite a bad rep, you know, like quite lazy, always on social media, have to rely on phones for everything. But I feel like we've been given, we were given that chance to show that, we can do something without a phone you know we're not reliant on maps or social media all the time you know and the race was a perfect time to kind of get that across and show that we're more than just you know two young people yeah we might be young but we've still got quite a lot of experience behind us and that clearly benefited us in the race when you and we sort of move on to the, the purpose behind this this conversation when you were able to have those sort of moments of reflection about what you were doing why you were doing it, but also the things you'd experienced in the past. Um, did you feel like that that was something that you were comfortable to share? Because obviously you're sharing it with a, with a camera crew and the sound engineers and all that that kind of stuff going on. So when you were able to start use those moments, there's one a shot of you by you know an amazing waterfall where you suddenly then just mm. start thinking yeah. about your life and what you've done. They're big thoughts to have, right? They're big things to sort of try and put into words. And you're doing it in front of millions of people. This thing, like, before I went out there, I was like, right, I told myself, like, right, I'm not going to get upset on camera. You know, I'll tell a bit about my past, but I'm not going to get too deep. But as the race went on, I kind of started realizing that what's being filmed is going to be shown to all these people. And then I started thinking, like, hang on, I can kind of get the message out there about, like, who I am and, you know, my past. And then I was like, well, that could help other people. And that was kind of the main thing for me, like getting my story out. Not so people know more about me, but so more people can kind of understand that it's okay to feel a certain way, you know, wherever you are in life, you know, like that's who you are at the, the time and you're going to be okay. So I kind of realized that I've got this platform now to get the message out there about, you know, mental health and all that. And I thought this is like the perfect opportunity to do that. So I was like, I'm not going to waste that. When you were sort of on those sort of, when you're obviously thinking about how can I, how can I express this? And, you know, on this journey, you, you, you're tired and I imagine emotions are, are, are running hard, but you've also got like 16 hour bus journeys and things like that. What was it about what you'd experienced that, that you wanted to get across? What was, what was that message that really you wanted to share about what you'd gone through in the past? I think just showing that like even though you might be going through tough times what you know wherever you are in life whatever stage of life you're in that you know eventually it'll be okay you know I don't I'm just a normal guy like just because I'm on the TV show I'm no important celebrity nothing like that I'm so like normal average job at the same reason I'm changing to be a pilot like I'm just trying to show that 
whoever you are, you can get through whatever you're kind of struggling with at the moment, even if it seems impossible or like you think you'll never get through it. But like it genuinely is because if I've done it, then anyone can do it. Are you okay to sort of rewind the clock for us a little bit? Just take us back to those sort of places when you when you're going through those those darker times. What was that experience like, and what were those uh, emotions that you were you were feeling during that difficult time? Yeah, no. So I think it was mainly kind of just school, like I said when I was younger. I just really struggled with mainly. I think the transition from like um, primary school into secondary school, I found that very difficult, and then that kind of just spiraled throughout school you know through year seven eight nine you know the anxiety the worries just kept getting worse and worse and i could just never shift them and it would affect like not just school life but my general life as well and it just made me you know unhappy with who i was you know i just couldn't enjoy anything and it yeah it just had a knock-on effect to my my mental health but i think as i started getting older i just started realizing that like i can push through this you know and the race again was another prime example of you know i can't push through this as difficult as it was you know i've got through my struggles in the past with anxiety or you know worries and stuff like that so if i've done that then i can get through the race as well which is what happened so i've kind of proved it to myself twice now which is a big confidence boost yeah absolutely and obviously going into um uh, and you talked about in the program you know wanting to become a, a pilot as well there are you know high pressure jobs high pressure situations did you feel for, that that was a positive thing to go through to think well i've done that or i'm going through this process as well actually anxiety is something i can put to one side or i i i I can find a way to manage it because i have done that in the past and i've and i've and i've worked a way through it yeah i think it is you know i'm a big one for not kind of having any regrets or like wishing my life was different to what it is you know i feel like everything happens for a reason so the fact i've gone through those struggles in the past and got through them just shows that I can get through you know any more struggles that I have in my life you know like you say being a pilot high pressure job but I know how to deal with that now so I'm almost as tough as the times were back in the day I'm almost glad that happened because it's it's kind of shaped me into the person I am now and obviously I'm grateful for that so you know as tricky as it was back in the day you know I don't I don't regret it and I'm I'm glad it happened because it's yeah shaped who I am today no, absolutely, absolutely. Can I ask you about Alfie? Because Alfie's journey on the program as well, um, he spoke about losing his mum at a very, very young age, uh, which I think for a lot of people, he's a much more sort of... Um, people, I think, can get their head around the sort of... Um, the physical aspect of losing a parent, a parent not, not being around anymore. And it almost gives you permission to sort of uh, sympathise and empathise. But obviously, when then you spoke out about your experience, which was much more based around anxiety, thoughts and feelings... I imagine from Alfie's point of view, many people would have known that Alfie had lost his mum in and around him, but maybe didn't know the impact that it had on him. For you, though, I wonder whether or not people have spoken to you afterwards and said, oh, and I've known you for years and I had no idea you were going through that. What's been the reaction to it? I think, yeah, like a lot of the people I was around at the time, you know, friends, family, they they kind of, they all knew about it and, you know, what I was going through because they kind of saw it. I was, a very, I was never very good at hiding it, so they all kind of knew about it, but you know, I had a lot of people messaging me after the race and during the race saying like, oh, I'm quite surprised that you went through this. You know, you don't show it now, um, which is quite a nice thing to hear because it shows that I am a different person to who I was. And, you know, I can clearly push past those struggles. So or a lot of people were surprised. They were like, oh, you don't strike me as the kind of person who was like, you know, had past struggles or worries or had anxiety and stuff like that. Um, but to hear that is nice because, like I said, it just shows that, I've, you know, it shows how far I've come. I guess as well, it moves into the work uh, you're going to be doing now. I know you've been invited to work with um, The Mix, which is an amazing organization which helps and support young people when it comes to um, their mental health. Um, like you said, you, are, you, you said yourself, you're not a celebrity, but you are someone who's, had a, who's got a high profile, has had a high profile, um, who has gone on to national TV and spoken openly about, openly about their mental health. And I can tell you, Owen, that you are the first generation of people who are now doing that because the generation that I grew up watching TV never spoke about their mental health in, in such an open way. Um, how comfortable are you with being that sort of that, that open book, if you like, in terms of what you've gone through? Yeah, no, I am definitely very open. Like the the race going on the show talking about it was kind of the first time I openly talked about it to, you know, a large group of people. You know, it's the first time I've had that kind of platform to do that. Uh, and that's kind of given me you know giving me the inspiration to kind of carry on with that so like when the mix got in touch i was like this is the exact kind of thing the first my first thought was like this is the exact kind of 
initiation or organization I wish I kind of had access to when I was was younger. So like to get the, the the message out there about what they're doing and kind of that they are there to help is really important because I I could have I would have benefited from that so much. So I'm just trying to get the message out there that you know there is this organization here in the mix and they can help. So yeah. No, fantastic. As well, I mean, it's worth pointing out as well that when we talk about young people and their experiences, and you were talking about experiences from year seven and year eight, we're only talking about experiences there from like 2014, 2015, which for a lot of the general public isn't that long ago. You know, people have got, you know, cars that are that, are that old. But actually, yeah. the, the things that have changed in that time have been huge. The, 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 the way that charities and organizations can interact with people, obviously social media's come, come a long way as well for good and and for bad do you feel like now is a good time to have that conversation and 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 to be open within the the world that we've created for young people yeah no definitely i think i've always been quite funny about social media like i've never i've never been too keen on it like there's been several times where i've deleted just got rid of you know instagram tiktok whatever just because i've been like this is just ruining me like it's making me so much worse but now to kind of have platforms like the mix that are focused on social media and websites i think finally there's kind of it's a good reason to use social media and i'm all for that like you can sit on instagram or tiktok and scroll through rubbish for hours but now the mix is obviously a good thing and like using social media kind of what i think it was intended for you know and getting a good message out there so i think that's what's really important for me just using the platforms that we have for a good reason Absolutely. We'll put some links, by the way, in the podcast notes to the mix and the work that they do. Uh, they've been on the podcast before, uh, before and they're a wonderful organization. Let me ask you this. Um, are you a different person now than the, the than the guy who appeared on the TV show, who, who signed up and, and sort of set off on that incredible journey? Definitely not. I feel like I, I've done a bit of traveling before, so I feel like that shaped me as well. But this, I'm not the kind of person who will come back from a trip and say, oh, I found myself and I'm a completely different person. I'm more the person that kind of I've built on who I am, like I've learned things. So like I'm I'm exactly the same as when I came back. I've just come back with a diff- slightly different perspective on some things, you know, a bit more, a bit more grateful on like the situation we have here in the UK and and just, yeah, just slight character building really. But I'm not, I'm, I'm exactly the same. Nothing, Nothing's really changed. Uh, were there moments that you look back on when, that for you really summarize what that journey was about yeah i ask a question yeah no definitely like there's so much to it like obviously two months every single day you're doing something it's so full-on and so much happens obviously you can't even remember the half of it but like thinking back to when i was at the waterfall like that was a good time for me to reflect and then just thinking of silly little times when me and Alfie were like making these little sandwiches on these overnight buses just to survive on and like and then getting to a checkpoint and like the feeling of coming first second third or just the feeling of just getting there and being relieved and then being at the finish line like it's so up and down like every day is different and it's so hard to like put it into words how it feels can you and I don't know if there's some sort of official secret act that I'm going to bridge, but can you tell me about when you get to these hotels, right? Because you guys are sleeping on buses, sleeping on floors, sleeping in all kinds of places, but then you rock up at these checkpoints, right? And they're always proper swanky hotels, the sort of places which if you were going there on holiday, you'd never be able to afford, but you've got access to them. And there's always like a swimming pool and there's a nice bar to do some shots of like reflections of the what's like what's the deal with that like do you get like 24 hours did he go right you got 24 hours now the buffet's open the bar's open fill your boots what, what's the sort of what 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 do you get handed if you like when you sign into the book uh so i really i really can't say too much on this obviously there's no it, 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 there's no like big secrets but like yeah we get to the checkpoint and then obviously we're there for a set time um it, it, it can differ like it's normally like you know a couple of days or something like that and you just you just chill out really and that, that there is nothing else to it really you get there you sign into the book and then that's it really you just yeah chill out for a couple of days but the, the times you're there are they normally differ but that, that's it there's nothing there's nothing special that goes on there that sounds to me a bit like what happens at checkpoint stays at checkpoint <laughs> kind of yeah but like i say like nothing nothing important or special like obviously you see uh like in japan we did the tea ceremony so that was a checkpoint so we do a small activity like that but apart from that that is that's it really it's time to chill out that's that's what checkpoints for so, yeah. yeah i believe you i believe you no absolutely in, in terms of um your own mental health now and obviously you had lots of different types of experiences when you when you're on your travels and obviously you've traveled before when you are feeling um 
from an anxiety point of view, maybe a little bit of shadows or a little bit of maybe previous thoughts start to come in. What are those things that you're able to do now? So then when a young person comes to you and says, I'm going through what you went through, what are those things now that you've got in place that allow you to then be in a better place that that can take you away from those thoughts that just, just put them, you know, back to one side, either distract you from them or completely sort of dissipate them? What what do you get up to now? I think a big thing like this kind of, I, I don't think call it a tactic, but, you know, a method I use is kind of thinking that like, in I don't know a month time, two months time, six months time, if I was looking back on what I was worrying about, would I think, why the hell was I worrying about that? And a lot of the time, I I do like if I'm worrying about something, I'll think in six months time, I'm going to look back on that and think, why did I worry about that? And a lot of the time, the answer is like, it was it was not worth worrying about. So I think putting yourself in in a kind of future tense and then thinking back on it, that's quite an important thing for me. And then it kind of puts the situation in, into perspective and you think, oh, this really isn't that big of a deal. So like, I'm not going to waste too much time worrying about it. That's kind of my main thing is a lot of the time you think, yeah, this wasn't worth worrying about. So I just imagine myself in that future, in that future tense, thinking back and thinking, is it worth worrying about? And half the time the answer is, well, no, 90% of the time the answer is no. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's a great tactic. And as well, it comes with sort of experience and emotional intelligence. Is it, it, There was always like, you know, if you ever heard about people who are getting bullied at school, they'd always be like the, the grandma who go, oh, just ignore them. Because what they'd be thinking is, look, I'm I'm 80. It doesn't it doesn't matter what happens when you're 13. Yeah. But like, but when you're 13 yeah. and you're getting bullied, it is your entire life and your t- entire existence. That ability to learn those skills to be self-reflective, look at yourself and think, right, okay, I'm in this situation. Mm. what are those things that that that's that's a real skill to learn isn't it yeah i know because it yeah on that like it always really annoyed me like when i used to worry about things you know a lot more than i do now and people would just either be like oh don't worry about it or it'll be fine i'm like that is like the worst advice you can give because like of course the person giving you that advice is saying that because they're not in your situation so saying don't worry about it or oh, i'm sure it'll be fine it, it that doesn't help at all so i feel like giving that sort of advice is is not helpful because they're not in your situation and they don't understand what it's like so i always try you now if someone's worrying about something i'm trying to help i always put myself in in their shoes and uh, i don't think people do that enough so i think that that is quite important not just giving advice from the situation you're in you need to kind of think about the situation they're in and think how you would feel about it i always think it's interesting as well isn't it with anxiety and stress that the two obviously are kind of like they're in that sort of same spectrum but at the same time you can have an exam tomorrow and you can be stressed about it or you can be generally anxious about what you're going to be able to do in an exam. But there's also something else which goes on with anxiety and I don't know if you've experienced this, but I certainly have, whereby it actually doesn't matter what you're anxious about. What it is, is you've got anxiety. And, and what's happening is that anxiety is sucking in all those elements and then whatever it is you've got to do is making you anxious. And if that's going out to, you know, in my case, I remember, you know, a really obvious example for me I had to go to, you don't even have these anymore. There was like a video shop where you could go to hire like DVDs. Yeah. And, like, but, you, but I remember I was watching a video and we had to have a DVD and I had to return it. And I couldn't leave the house. Like I couldn't physically bring myself to leave that. Now, I wasn't worried about going into Blockbuster Video and handing over. Like That's the easiest thing in the world to do. Walk up the street, hand it over, pick up a bag of butter kiss popcorn and, 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 and go on and watch the next one. Easiest thing in the world. But the anxiety, man, I couldn't, I couldn't go near that. And I, I had to turn to my, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife actually, and I said, I can't even explain why, but I can't come with you. I, I yeah. just can't go. And I think that's one of those things with, with anxiety, which I didn't, but I didn't know how to put that into words. I was just like, I just can't move. And nobody yeah. ever spoke about anxiety, you know, back in 2003, 2004, other than, well, what, have you, what are you anxious about? What have you got to worry about? There's nothing going on. And I'd be like, goodness me, I know, but, it but what do you want me to, to do? Reason. Yeah, it doesn't need to have a reason, does it? Like sometimes you just feel the way you do. It doesn't like, if I'm worried about, well, like I'm having a down day or something like that, people are like, oh, what's up? And I'm like, I actually don't know. And like, you, you just think about it and you're like, there is actually nothing wrong. I'm like, just feeling a certain way. And like, that's that's fine as well. It doesn't always need a reason. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what do people say to you in the street when they catch you? You know, just like catch your eye and think, are you? Like what? Yeah, that's yeah. They do exactly that. Are you, are you yeah. They do a look. They normally do a double take. They take a second, and then they're like, "Are you that guy across the world?" I'm just like, "Yeah, 
And then they are, a lot of the time they're either, oh, that's sick, man. And then just kind of, so see you later, walk off a lot. A lot of the time they ask you questions about it, but I don't mind it. I don't, I don't find it boring. I find it quite interesting actually talk to people about it because I know they're interested in it. So, and then obviously you like taking pictures. Oh, of course, of course, yeah, the obligatory selfie now. Um, yeah. What's uh, what's the question you get asked the most, and, and have I already asked it yet? <laughs> Probably just, how was it? Everyone starts with how was it, yeah. And like I said, I, I said, I just say, it's the best thing I've ever done, but it's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's the best way of putting it. And did they ask you, how's Alfie? Oh, yeah, no, because a lot of people think for some reason that after they said, oh, are, you, are you still mates with Alfie? They always think that we're not still mates. Um, but yeah, no, well, I'm always like, yeah, we're still fine. I see him all the time. So yeah. Fantastic stuff. Well, I think it's, it's an incredible, Hey, to go on that TV show in and of itself, I think it's just a great thing. It always cracks me up when you guys like are racing to checkpoint and like, it's only like the third stage, but like, you've got to win. But you think, well, it doesn't really like for the sake of setting off two minutes later, the, the, the following day. Yeah. But there's obviously the, the, you obviously get into this sort of like, um, this mindset, which is really, really interesting to see. There's obviously the, the financial sort of the financial thing is is there at the end, but you'd almost think, well, it, it's but it's not like a million quid or anything like that. But it's a, it, it's a nice prize to have, particularly for a young guy uh, as well. Has that been able to unlock for you other opportunities as well? Oh, well, winning or yeah, yeah. Well, I, I know this, but well, I'm saying this, but on the on the sort of the after show, Alfie basically went off, spent all mine on 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 oh, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I think it's safe to say I'm a bit more sensible with the, the money than he is. I think that's that's pretty safe to say. But um, no, like, like I, I've said it loads of times in interviews and that, like I'm going back to Asia in uh, September just for a few months because there's so much we missed while we're out there. And like, even though we went to certain places and saw certain things, like you just have to rush off because you're in a race and you can't enjoy everything because you don't have much money. Um, so I'm going to be spending, not all of it, but like a fair chunk of it going back to Asia for a few months and just kind of, doing my own thing enjoying it no time pressure no really money worries so yeah that's that's what i'm doing with most of it and are you and alfie planning any holidays just like lads holiday beaches just sitting uh, doing nothing we went away last week actually with uh, a few other mates to mallorca so that was nice and then we went to we went to albania in may uh so we've done a couple of other trips and then obviously we're, we're both doing our own thing so yeah no we've been away since were you up like at like 6 a.m yeah, counting the cash on the table, Kitty planning, yeah. and all the lads are going. I'm go- I've not even gone to bed yet. <laughs> I know, I know for sure I wasn't. I don't know if he was, but that's, that's his game. But I definitely was not doing that. Oh, fantastic! I know, I know you do like uh, podcasting stuff with the with the mix as well. Uh, these street mm-hmm. interviews as well. Uh, Alfie's an obvious guest, isn't he? To talk uh, talk about maybe your story together. Yeah, no, we've definitely spoke about having him on. I think it would be great to have. One at one of the episodes or podcasts or whatever with with both of us on, I think that would yeah definitely be a good a good chat. No, brilliant stuff. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing from some more of those conversations, particularly particularly between the two of you as well, because you were such great chemistry. Uh, even in the times you were falling out uh, on, on on the show, I'm sure it, it never lasted very long. Uh, and uh, the both of you were, were were great value throughout the entire series. Congratulations on everything you've achieved so far. Great partnership as well with the mix as well. We'll get links to that in the uh, the podcast notes as well. And uh, Owen, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast. Thanks for checking out Mental Health Monday. My name is Mick Coyle. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Mick Coyle. You can also find me, Mick Coyle, on Facebook as well. Don't forget, if you want to speak to somebody about your mental health, you can do so. The Samaritans, uh, free to call on 116 123. You can find mental health services where you are. Just look for the Hub of Hope. Type in your postcode. It'll find those mental health services close to you. And for support in a crisis, you can text SHOUT to 85258. That's if you're experiencing a personal crisis, uh, you're unable to cope and need support. Uh, Shout to 85258. That's a text line. Do get involved in those services. In an absolute emergency, always remember the number to call is 999. Thanks for downloading the podcast this week. We'll be back next week with more Mental Health Monday.